Happy holidays and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you're here and I thought today I would do my top jazz vinyl finds of 2021. Now these are not all uh, new records or uh, reissued records on Record Store Day or Tone Poet releases or Craft or whatever even though I have a little bit of that mixed in here. These are records I found during the year that just knocked me out and that I was really happy to have and also the ones that I can remember getting because I can't remember exactly what I got through the years. But let's jump into it. Starting out with Joe Henderson, In and Out. I believe this is a Tone Poet release. There are no bad Joe Henderson records. I mean not one. He put out an amazing run of records from the early 60s up until his death in the mid 90s I believe culminating in his great success on Verve when he was sort of acknowledged for being one of the great jazz masters of the 60s so that's just one that I have a few I have a few other ones I don't go crazy about autofile pressings they're nice uh, I do think there's a little bit of a fetish, fetishism going on about audiophile pressings to where that's the only thing you need and I understand that in some cases that's all people can find but as my good buddy Dan the Jazz Shepherd says Discogs. You can find amazing records on Discogs, and because the way they're listed in Discogs, there's not a lot of flash or ballyhoo, it's not an auction, prices tend to be better than what you'd see at eBay. If you really want to build a jazz collection, you have to do more than buy new release reissues on the, all the you know, tone poets and all that stuff. There's a lot of jazz out there in the world. Anyway, sorry about the ramp. Ethnic Heritage Ensemble, led by the drummer Khalil... Elzabar. I guess you would call this free jazz. This is definitely spiritual jazz, spiritual music. He's been making great music for a long time. This is not a new record. It might have come out a couple years ago actually, but I was really happy to find it out in the wild as a new pressing. You know, when you get into the idea of spiritual jazz and, you know, obviously Alice and John Coltrane are the founders of that, along I believe with uh, Art Ensemble of Chicago and a handful of other artists. It's great to find living artists who do a great job with that music and this is one of them. He reminds me of uh, Art Ensemble but in the present day. Nouvelle Records has put out a variety of great records year after year. They put them out in groups of five. This came out last year. Ellis Marsalis with Jason Mar Marsalis for all we know uh, of the great Marsalis family. Ellis a pianist. Jason I believe his grandson. Perhaps it is his son on drums and this is just a fantastic recording a wonderful meeting of two like-minded souls two family members blessed by by magic in the same way I can't find it here but the Roy Hargrove Mulgrew Miller record that's just a beautiful recording that came out last year two live recordings of two concerts that is just an epic recording um, and this in the same way is a really wonderful duo recording on Nouvelle Ellis Marsalis with Jason Marsalis Whenever you find a Milford Graves record, it is a reason to celebrate. His records are very hard to find. And I literally just found this last week, Milford Graves' Meditation Among Us, on the Japanese label Kitty. Princeton Record Exchange had a rack full of collectible records. I about fell down when I saw this. 50 bucks. I mean, talk about spiritual jazz. This is also one of the founders. He's, Milford Graves is like Keith Moon in a strange way. And that when you, I've seen him play a few times, what he's literally playing does not seem to be what you hear. It's almost like sleight of hand or some sort of jujitsu, and he was into martial arts. It's really uncanny, and I've only seen that a couple of times. I saw Elvin Jones play twice, and when Elvin played, what you heard is exactly what you saw. Going around the kit, you know, as a drummer, I kind of relate in a particular way to the drummers. When I would see Milford playing, it was just like a wash of sound in the same way Keith Moon was. And you really couldn't articulate visually what he was doing, what, what he was playing. But any Milford Graves record you find, this one, uh, there's a great one on ESP. He played uh, backup for Albert Isler on a few records. Grab them if you can find them. They're worth just sort of putting on. And it's meditative music. Meditation Among Us, oddly enough, is the name of this record. Sonny Rollins, live in Holland. Now, a few people complained about the uh, sound quality of this record, but to me, this is an incredible performance, an incredible record. Um, easily equals Live at the Village Vanguard with Pete LaRocca and Wilbur Ware, I think. This is a great Sonny Rollins record, playing with two of the top musicians in, where was this recorded? Norway? 
anyway, with our Rudd Jacobs and Han Benick, the great Han Benick, and they meet Sonny Toe for Toe. Um, one of these is sort of a raw concert performance, one of the other performances off the radio, but this is a fantastic record. I don't understand why some people kind of dissed it. It's a Sonny at the peak of his powers being challenged by a different mindset. Think about it, the early 60s, this is when? Early mid 60s, playing free or thinking that way is an entirely new way of approaching music. And this trio really pushes Sonny to play some really great music. So I highly recommend this. Sonny Rollins, Rollins and Holland. You can still find this. We have a, quite a few of these left over at the Jazz Record Center. Oh, 1967. Art Blakey, the Witch Doctor, this was a 2021 tone poet. Art Blakey made a lot of great records. Witch Doctor, Mosaic, Monin, which is really Blue Note 4011, I think. Uh, but there's a handful um, on Blue Note with the Jazz Messengers that are just epic, must have jazz recordings. And this is one of them with the classic lineup of Lee Morgan, Wayne Shorter, Bobby Timmons, Jimmy Merritt, with a typical beautiful packaging we get from uh, Tone Poet. These things are worth every penny. Keeping in mind records that are sort of under the radar, everyone focuses on Art Blakey's Blue Note input, but he did a couple records for Columbia. Uh, this one is on Colpix, play selection from the new musical Golden Boy. And this record blew me away. <laughs> Just a phenomenal recording. It's actually nice to hear Art Blakey in a different recording environment than Rudy Van Gelder. You get a different take on his playing. A different you know view into his masterful drumming uh, this one has an unusual lineup Lee Morgan Freddie Hubbard Curtis Fuller Wayne Shorter Reggie Workman Cedar Walton Julius Watkins James Spalding Bill Barber and Charles Davis so it's an expanded group um, octet but if you can find this this is a wonderful record I paid 20 bucks for this at the world-famous Jazz Record Center uh, I recently took a lot of criticism for criticizing Donald Byrd's spaces and places I'm sorry that is a disco fried, not very good record. Look beyond what the major label audiophile reissues are giving you. I, f I forgot where I saw this record. Donald Burl Bird and Johnny Cole's Child's Play on Polydor. This is a British record. Um, maybe this is available as a New York recording on a different label. I don't know. Recorded in New York City in 1962. Duke Pearson, Bob Cranshaw, Walter Perkins. And this is a thrilling record. I'd never seen it before. I never saw it again. But you're, when you're out in the wild, you can find amazing things. Uh, keeping in mind of labels like Savoy, Mainstream, that don't get a lot of coverage. Groove Merchant from the 70s. Muse is another one. I often listen to late night radio. I listen to, uh, used to be Art Bell. Now it's Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. And throughout the night, he plays the same bumper music all the time. Well, he played this one thing. He plays it every night, like around 3 a.m. It's this weird popping funk groove with, uh, I thought it was maybe average white band. So I looked on the, on the, uh, on his website, and he said the name of the tune. He posted, the, the name is posted there of the tune, and I looked it up, and there are three different versions. The original version is on a guitar player record on Mainstream. This is another version, Raymond Moore's Sweet Sister Funk on Groove Merchant with a great lineup, Albert Daly, Mickey Roker, Mickey Bay, Cedric Bridgewater, Lloyd Davis, Tony Waters. You know, Raymond Morris, there, you know, there are a lot of sax players coming out of New York City in the 60s who never really got their due, and this is a really funky, fun record. Little hints of black exploitation soundtrack, but just a fantastic record, and a record under the radar that you won't see unless you're out digging. You know, like, you gotta do a dig, folks. You gotta go out in the wild. And I think Discogs, qualifies as digging as well. Harold Lamb, Westward Bound. This was a Record Store Day release earlier in the year. A fantastic recording. Recorded at the Penthouse, the same location where the recently uh, issued John Coltrane Live in Seattle, Love Supreme was recorded. This is overall a better sounding recording than that. And it shows Harold Land and Car Carmel Jones at the top of their game. This is a fantastic Record Store Day release that you cannot go wrong with. Produced by Corey Weeds and Zev Feldman from 1962, 64, and 65. Outstanding lineup. Hampton Hawes, Monk Montgomery, Jimmy Loveless, who, who still lives in the city and plays. Mel Lee, Philly Joe Jones. Uh, just, you know, the height of upbeat, adventurous, hard bop. Uh, I believe Harold Lanham was based on the, on the West Coast. West Coast hard bop has a little different sound than New York hard bop. Uh, equally as exciting, equally as thrilling, and this is a thrilling recording. 
I really suggest you get this record. This is an unqualified rave. You won't go wrong with this record. And it's definitely one of my favorite releases of the year. From the late 60s to the early 2020s, Pat Metheny, I'm a huge Pat Metheny fan. I owe all, all his records. I've interviewed him many times. I think Pat Metheny's a genius. I don't think he actually gets the credit he's due because he is so successful. This was his last, well, his last album is the Side Eye uh, CD live performances with James Francis on keyboards and Marcus Gilmore on drums. But this is his last solo under, album under his name. Then he had the, the piece, the uh, LA Guitar Quartet doing his piece. But this is a beautiful, in a way, this kind of reminds it's almost like a summation of all his pat metheny group records i hear tinges of everything from off ramp to thinking of now to uh still life talking it's all amalgamated and, and even though pat metheny is not an audiophile i've interviewed him he listens to in wall systems at his house and in his car all his records have a very beautiful lush sound and i think a lot of that is probably down to steve rodby uh his bass player back in the last version of the Pat Metheny group. And those, all his records are very beautiful sounding. And this one uh, has all the great Metheny trademarks. If you're a Metheny fan, you'll love this. On non such. The UK jazz scene, which I just wrote about in Stereophon Magazine, has been exploding for a few years now. This is one of the best groups out of that scene, Dinker and Moses. This is not a, a new record, a drummer and saxophonist. They're not really avant-garde, they're not really free, but they're very playful and exploratory. They've done some records on Gearbox. Um, they have another one here I'm gonna show in a second. Uh, there are a series of Bill Evans releases produced by Zeb Feldman. I think this is probably the best one, the most famous one, the only one that's gone into reprint. Bill Evans, some other time. The Lost Session from the Black Forest, recorded at the MPS Studios in the Black Forest in Germany. And this is just a wonderful recording. If you can find this, grab it up, because I think even the represses will eventually be gone. We are out of these at the Jazz Record Center. So if I was you, I would run out and get this record as soon as you can. Along the highways and byways of record collecting, you will sometimes find a record store that just stuns you and blows your mind. And that was my experience when I went to Double Decker Records in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I went out there to interview or to do a pre-interview with uh, Jonathan Weiss of Oswald Mills. I'm reviewing a pair of his speakers, the Fleetwood DeVilles, which I'm really excited about getting. But this store, I took like records I thought they would take and trade. They gave me the most in trade I've ever had at any store. Blew me away. And I bought a lot of records there, but the most fun I had was buying a bunch of 10 inches. And I would just go through these without saying that much about each one. This is a pretty uh, amazing uh, racist cover of a record that includes uh, Eddie Locke, John Davis, Oh, Eddie Lockjaw Davis and two other tenor players. Really early Lockjaw on Pontiac Records. I was excited to find some Johnny Smith 10 inches. Johnny Smith, the great guitar player, the forgotten guitarist who has such a beautiful tone. And while I'm not a huge Rosemary Clooney fan, when she's young, she swings her ass off and she's very attractive. Another Johnny Smith 10 inch. If you can find Johnny Smith records, they're often well played because people love these records. He had a big, golden saturated tone he had a great touch on the instrument and all his records sound really great you could say the same thing about coleman hawkins basically the originator of the jazz tenor saxophone you know there's an amazing record with uh coleman hawkins and sonny rollins i forgot the name of it where sonny starts playing out and coleman just goes right with him and to me even any coleman hawkins record still sounds amazingly contemporary i don't know why I guess because his phrasing is just timeless and universal. He was a real master. Then another fun 10 inch I got there for $3, Eartha Kit. 10 inches are a lot of fun to play with. I have a review coming shortly of this record, of this rather this CD box set, Joe Henderson Complete Blue Note on Mosaic. And in the review, I'm really pushing, and I'm glad my editor, Jim Austin, let it hang, that Kraft needs to reissue the milestone records and all that stuff they have on Joe Henderson. You know, Power to the People, Black Miracle. Um, he did about seven amazing records in California on Milestone, and I forgot the other labels. And they are, they're very hard to find, and they've never been reissued. As I've said before, the labels can make a star whoever they want to make a star of. They keep John Coltrane and Miles Davis in everybody's headlights, but they ignore Duke Ellington, Columbia. There's, you know, if they did a big, huge Duke Ellington campaign, you know, you'd probably see TV specials on Duke or documentaries on TV about Duke. This would be a fantastic reissue. 
on uh, a Town Poet vinyl release because there were, not only is it all his leader dates on Blue Note, but it's all his sideman dates with an amazing booklet full of liners by Bob Blumenthal. And I spoke too soon. I have more jazz records that I bought. Uh, this is Consenting Adults, a CD that came out in the 90s but was reissued last year on uh, Crisscross Jazz. Brad Meldow, Mark Turner, Peter Bernstein, Larry Grenadier, and Leon Parker. And this is a fantastic record of a bunch of great players early in their careers playing as one. Two LPs. Whenever I see an art ensemble of Chicago record, I grab it. This is Shy Congo. Art ensemble, you know, they're a little bit of everything. And they could play everything, and they could swing. They play African music, they play Irish reels, they play folk music, they sing choruses. Deep, deep stuff. If you can find one of their records, grab it. Don Coltrane, Alice Coltrane, Cosmic Music. I have really been getting into all the Coltrane free stuff. Sunship, Expressions. But I'm really, I'm really diving into it. I used to think it was just too hard, the sheets of sound, but now I'm kind of hearing through that and it's worth exploration. This is spiritual music, but this is like heavy spiritual music. Pinker and Moses, Journey to the Mountain of Forever, another great record out of the UK on Gearbox. This record I believe was universally praised by everyone, including me, Andrew Hill, Passing Ships, a Tom Poet release, previously unreleased. I think it might've come out in some format. It had an extra third disc, and this record, it's interesting to hear him play or write for a larger ensemble. And I think actually these melodies were more approachable. Some of his music on his other records can be pretty dense. Judgment, Black Fire, that can be really dense music. This was more open. And I thought a little easier to get into. Case in point of We Can Make Someone a Star. Why Columbia has not stepped up and done a full reissue, not only Columbia, but Columbia, Atlantic, whoever owns Bethlehem, whoever owns Candid, of the Charles Mingus catalog is beyond me. This is one of the great figures in jazz, bar none. I mean, Mingus is, as, to me, is easily as great as Miles. He's as great as Ellington. Approachable to Coltrane. He's totally unique. He has a totally unique voice. He wrote some beautiful compositions like Duke Ellington's Sky, uh, Sound of Love, Peggy's Blue Skylight, his most famous song, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. And this was a nice reissue of Aum that Columbia did last year. I believe it is from Files, but it sounded fantastic to me. And I just, you know, I want to see more of this. Charles Mingus, you know, is one of the great top five figures in jazz, along with Monk, Coltrane, Miles. He's one of the major dudes. At Jazz Record Center, I'm lucky to find early recordings when the owner will sell me the record. Sometimes he will not. Uh, but this is the second pressing of Pithecanthropus Erectus by Charles Mingus, one of the great Mingus recordings. And you know you see these beautiful covers. When you see an early pressing of a of a well-made 50s or 60s wrecking record, nothing is like it. They, they age so beautifully, and the color stock is really great. I'm a huge fan of Gregory Porter. Gregory Porter is a Christian. I am a Christian. To me, he embodies what a Christian should be. The title song on this record, "Take Me to the Alley," just blew me away the first time I heard it. It's the story of uh, of Christ coming to the earth. And they're showering him with, you know, to uh, invitations to the famous and the wealthy, come see me, come see me. In the song, Take Me to the Alley, Gregory Porter says, in the words of Christ, take me to the alley. Take me where the broken ones are. Take me where the people who are haunted. Take me to the victims, the ones who've lost their lives and who are miserable. And that really knocked me out because that's the essence of Christianity. But this is a great record. He's a unique voice. I found this uh, 3LP Actuel comp couple weeks ago. I forgot where I found it. A collection of avant-garde free jazz psychedelic from the BYG actual catalog of 6971. Truly outside recordings. This, someone was really nice enough. I think it was uh, one of our former Jazz Vinyl Lovers members sent this to me. And it's a uh, R. Benz and Hart Oracle conversation free jazz recording. Beautifully recorded. And it knocked me out when I put it on. Really a special recording, really well done. Jim Hart, Vibes Marimba, Florian R. Benz, drums and percussion, Henri something or another bass. Just a really great state of the art, warm, fun, free jazz record. This is one of my favorite recordings of the year. Emma Jean Thackeray, Yellow, a young woman in the UK 
who assembles all her music in the computer after she plays it and her group plays it. Then she puts it in the computer, makes the arrangements in the computer. Uh, beautiful tunes, particularly my favorite one called Scepter or Specter, Specter, which is a song about, you think it's a song about a ghost, but it's really about something else. Beautiful state-of-the-art UK jazz. On the opposite end, I was very happy to find Mildred Anderson, No More in Life. This is an old prestige Bluesville record with Lord Westbrook, Leon Gaskin, Bobby Donaldson on drums. Just real urban blues, a really fun record. The next probably great jazz singer we're all going to become aware of, if you're not already, Veronica Swift. Her father was a famous bassist here in town. She's at her heart a jazz singer, but she can really sing anything. And she is a special performer, Veronica Swift, This Bitter Earth. Then in that video where I trashed Spaces and Places, I praised this Mazelle Brothers produced record, Bobby Humphrey, Fancy Dancer, great mid-early 70s uh, jazz disco. This was also reissued this past year, Buena Vista Social Club. Not really jazz per se, but a classic landmark record. I thought a beautiful transfer to vinyl. I don't know how it was recorded. Down in Cuba, probably all analog. Um, but this music is, you know, has many different qualities, all very attractive, worth looking for. And then finally, I found a couple reissues I really liked. A Speaker's Corner version of Miles Smiles and an ESP reissue of the Henry Grimes trio, The Call. Thanks for watching. Bye.